Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devi. Today we are going to discuss the ideological differences between Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and Gandhi ji. Apart from that we are also going to discuss the contributions and the fundamentals about Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, what happened in 1939 and what actually is the legacy and how the government is acknowledging the legacy of Subhash Chandra Bose. We will discuss that as well. from the perspective of gs mains paper first it is important that you understand this particular segment from the perspective of prelims the preliminary facts are important of course we are going to discuss about bose his contribution and the differences as well as the amicable part between netaji and gandhi ji what happened in 1939 and what is the legacy the current acknowledgement of it so as we see 23rd january since 2021 has been celebrated as parakram divas and yesterday we observed the 126th birth anniversary of netaji parakram divas as it has been maintained to be followed since 2021 was announced to be done so in a tweet by the prime minister of india in order to acknowledge and honor the bravery valor of netaji and to inspire the future generations to follow his ideals of courage and sacrifice and how he influenced the indian national movement Now on Parakram Divas every year various events and programs are held across the country moving ahead if we talk about Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose he was born on 23rd of January 1897 in Katak Odisha Div division of Bengal province and he was the ninth of the 14th children of Prabhavati Dat Bose and Janki Nath Bose in 1919 he cleared the Indian civil services examination later on he Uh, you know uh, resigned from it and his spouse was emily shank and he was a very private person he did not care much about his private life but he had one child one daughter anita bose okay and his education was done from ravenshaw college at school katak presidency college calcutta university of cambridge england as a political party associated uh, associate he worked in the inc forward block and the indian national army the movement he influenced a lot was the indian national movement his ideology was strong nationalism communism fascism inclined and his religious beliefs were hinduism he was greatly influenced by vivekananda's teaching and also considered him to be his spiritual guru but his political mentor was chitranjan das moving ahead if we talk about the contributions he joined the mahatma gandhi led non cooperation movement with a lot of vigor and there only he got chitranjan das as his political mentor he also later on became the bengal congress's volunteer commandant and he went to jail several times for his contribution in the movement when he was released from prison in 1927 he founded the publication known as swaraj then began working with jawaharlal nehru after being made the general secretary of the congress party and then he was elected as the president of the inc in 1938 under him only the planning committee was established which used to be inclined towards industrialization so he was the one person who was having a similar approach with respect to the economy as jawaharlal nehru had back then that was industrialism and he started that under the planning committee he also founded the all india forward block and joined which joined the congress in 1939 this was a left leaning block we can say he established the indian national army which is which is commonly known as the azad hind fauj he made his way to germany after fleeing india in 1941 as he stepped down from the uh, presidency post in 1939 we will discuss that as well he traveled to singapore in 1943 and began the army recruitment there only from the indian prisoners of war when of course we know that he shook hands with imperialist japan because he wanted to throw away british regime in india there were around 45 soldiers aboard the indian uh, azad hind fauj these were indian prisoners of war and in the japanese occupied andaman islands he raised the indian flag in 1944 the azad hind fauj also launched attacks in the country's northeastern areas in order to evict the british other than that the freedom struggle included active participation of women as well you know that azad hind fauj has a women's regiment as well and that regiment was led by captain lakshmi swaminathan and under her leadership 
the female unit performed bravely. Moving ahead, as you see the contributions, you have well enough for that. Let's talk about Bose and Gandhiji. There were a lot of ideological differences. Rather than the ideological differences, we are going to discuss the main participants of the ideological differences. Other than that, of course, we are going to talk about the similarities between Bose and Gandhiji as well. So, when it comes to the approach, the approach to free India was very different when it comes to their ideologies. For Gandhiji, it was Ahimsa and Satyagraha, which was, of course, his way of moving forward with respect to Indian freedom movement. For Bose, he believed that Gandhiji's strategy is not of much use and it will be insufficient if we have to secure India's independence. See, Gandhiji was against any sort of violence. First, because he thought that any kind of violence would, would be repressed and suppressed with a heavy hand. And for that, not a lot of people would want to participate in such movements such as women and children. They would refrain from this. And if we are violent, it would give the British uh, a reason or an excuse to suppress and repress this revolt. And the second one is Hinza as a sole tool or violence as a sole tool for Gandhiji was of no use. So there was the difference. There was also a difference when it comes to how means are there are being employed, what kind of conduct is there to achieve the result. So for Gandhiji, no means could be used to reach an aim, no matter how desirable. If any means is there which is unjust in nature, for him end matters in the same manner as the means. For Bose, he was focused on the outcome of the activity, doesn't matter what the process is. So it could be justified or unjustified. Moving ahead, form of government, here also they differ. For Gandhiji, his ideal state, his Ram Rajya, had no representative government. He did not believe in any sort of constitution, army or police force. He also was against centralization. So he wasn't happy with the fact that a central power or a central authority would exist. People would be able to rule themselves. That is what they believed. Bose believed in early works that democracy was the best political system for India. He thought that earlier he used to believe democracy is going to best be best for India, but later on he also started going against democracy, saying that if we have to ensure that one nation could be reconstructed, democracy is not going to play a huge role in that. So he was th of the thought that it would be insufficient. And when it comes to economy, Gandhiji thought that decentralization without state control is the best. So decentralization should be there, cottage industry should be set up. This village industries should be set up. This was his thought. But for Bose, he thought that a centralized industrialization would lead the economy forward. Other than that, when it comes to education, Gandhiji opposed the English education system or the Western education system, saying that if we re remain subservient, if our own tongue remains subservient to a foreign language, we can never become a great nation. For Subhash Chandra Bose, he advocated better education, particularly when it comes to science and technology. He also believed that education should be also employed in the field of military, technical and administration. So here also they were of, uh, you know, differing ideologies. When it comes to timing of struggle, this has been the most important part when it comes to what happened in 1939. See, Gandhiji felt that the British had to be supported during the war so that they can promise them independence in the later or the soon, sooner future. So he thought, Gandhiji thought that it is important for India to be a part of, to hold hands with the British in order to defeat the fascist exil forces. But Subhash Chandra Bose believed that it is the time where we can actually evict British, the British because of their weakness in the war. So he shook hands with the imperialist Japan. He also did not have any problem in collaborating with the Nazis. All right. So this was what happened when it comes to ideological differences. Now, if we talk about what happened in 1939, see, in 1938, Subhash Chandra Bose became the president of the INC. He thought I should do the same. His ideology was very well supported within the INC back then. So, uh, of course, from many people, but not Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel, and Gandhi, they did not support his ideology because of the differences that they had. So in 1939, Subhash Chandra Bose, he wanted to contest the elections again 
but this was despite the opposition of Sadar Vallabhai Patel Gandhiji and Nehru. So what happens that uh, when uh, he, you know, when a contest was to be conducted, it was against Patabi Sitaramaya and Patabi Sitaramaya versus Subhash Chandra Bose. But Subhash Chandra Bose de defeated him by 200 votes. And the problem is that because he was backed by Gandhiji, uh, and Gandhiji thought that because Patabi Sitaramaya got defeated, it was not his defeat. It was indeed Gandhiji's defeat himself. So he was uh, thinking it as uh, taking it as a personal defeat. But Bose was not happy with it. He was very discouraged because he saw that he was not having any sort of support from Gandhiji, from Jawaharlal Nehru, from Sadar Vallabhai Patel. They were not compromising in nature with respect to the agendas he was going to set for the INC. So he stepped down as the president. And rest is of course history. But the thing is that there were also certain similarities between the two uh, great ideologies. So Gandhiji labeled Subhash Chandra Bose as the prince of patriot in 1942. He believed that his means were not justified. His the ideology might not be in favor of the current situation of India back then. But he was very adamant with the fact that Subhash Chandra Bose was a staunch nationalist, a staunch patriot. Gandhiji stated that Netaji's patriotism, uh, this was at the time uh, when his uh, death was announced. Uh, Netaji's de death was announced. His patriotism, uh, patriotism is second to none. His bravery shines through all his actions and he aimed high and failed. But who has not failed? So Bose also thought that Gandhiji is, and, and he definitely had, uh, you know, a congruence with respect to the fact that Gandhiji back then as a symbol was very important for Indian national um, movement. So he termed him, referred to him as the father of our nation which was done through a radio broadcast from Ringon in 1944. And at the same time, in the same sentence, he also said that without any sort of violence, we are not going to achieve independence. Okay, Both men, Subhash Chandra Bose and Gandhiji, they saw socialism as the way forward in Indian, albeit, although in, in a different way. Both were religious and they both despite communism, despised communism. Okay, Both opposed untouchability and advocated for women's rights. So these were the certain, you can say, similarity between the two great personalities. So, like you see, recently, the Prime Minister of India has renamed 21 islands in Anman and Nicobar on Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's birth anniversary. Earlier also, we saw that certain areas from where Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose operated were renamed in Anman and Nicobar. For Ross Island, it was named as Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. For Havelock, it was Swaraj Deep. And for Neil Island, it was Shaheed Dweep. And now, again, 21 islands have been renamed. Now, last year only, to mark the year-long celebration of 125th birth anniversary of Subhash Chandra Bose, a grand statue of Netaji had to be installed and was installed at India Gate. And uh, till the work could be completed, a hologram was also reinstated, we can say. So, these were the many facts that we have to discuss from the perspective of your examination. Let me take the names of those students who have answered my last question correctly. Option A was the correct answer. So, Sanjogita, Shirley, Suraj, Sagarika, Alka, Suvadra, Muhammad, Evangeline, also Srinivas. Srinivas has answered two questions. Very good. Pallavi Jangir, Negha, Aarti also very good. Dipanshi, good. Tushita, Shirley, again very good. Chaitanya, very good. Uh, Anuj, very good. Then Sumantha, good. God's love, very good. Megha uh, has also under, answered this, very good. N. Vaishnavi, Aarti, uh, Puneet, Akhil, Rupal, Shubham, Teja, Anjali, Sumanth, Rahul and Rishabh. So answer the next question as well. That's it. Thank you so much for watching.